I moved into my inner city apartment here in Stockholm a year ago and did some initial renovations before moving in, like updating the kitchen, sanding the floors and painting everything. It's been amazing living here, but I've had a few little things that have bothered me. You know the things that you see or touch every day that are just not right. So I've been working on fixing them and thought I'd share and maybe inspire you to get one of those little annoyances done in your home too. My first thing I actually started this summer. All the light switches and electrical outlets are 15 years old from when my apartment was built. They had yellowed quite a bit. When basically everything in my place is white, these stood out like a sore thumb to me. At first I considered placing them, but I couldn't find all the bits, so that was a no-go. Someone had suggested in a comment to spray paint them, and I was initially unsure if it would work, but I decided to give it a go. I unscrewed and disassembled all the pieces and used a cardboard box as a spray box. Then I primed and painted according to the instructions on the can. Let dry overnight and attached everything again. It took a few days before there was limited space in my spray box, but it turned out so well and I'm a happy camper. These wardrobes were already in my apartment when I moved in. Still not a fan of the mirrored doors, but they do allow light to bounce around in the stark area, so I've decided to keep them. The handles were both flimsy and small, which annoyed me. I'd constantly get so many fingerprints on the glass trying to pinch the wardrobe open by those tiny handles. There are limited options for mirror doors, I realized. I couldn't just drill a hole in and add just any handle, so I decided to try to semi-DIY something more exciting than just a metal grip. I got me a scrap piece of natural leather and used carpet tape to stick it down to the new handles I bought. Screw them back and hey presto. I love the new look, but to be honest there's still always fingerprints. Duh. This one's connected to the first one. In my bedroom I had a rat's nest of outlets and stuff on one of the walls and I couldn't stand the look of it. I also needed for my router to be in that area and boy that stuff isn't pretty and such a dust collector. I tried placing the router on my windowsill and on the cabinet nearby, but the signal turned for the worst every time I moved it. It only wanted to be in that very spot on the floor or very close to it. I saw the mess when I got out of the bed in the morning and when I sat at my desk, so I knew I needed to fix it. I also knew that I couldn't just unscrew all the bits and spray paint them, because they're basically the internet and you just don't mess with the internet, do you? The solution came when I thought maybe I could build a box to go around it, and then I realized I have a box that can go around it all. Back in the day when I was a blogger and received all kinds of random stuff, I got a box of goodies from Hellman's, the Mayo. I kept the box because it's a nice box and I'm partial to nice boxes, 
And look, 10 years later it came in so handy. I couldn't believe it when I was just able to slip it over the whole mess and then put the router on top. Hallelujah! Oh, in case you're worried, there's an air gap at the back so nothing gets overheated in there. I triple checked. I love my bathroom. The white tiles, the black and white floors, and I love it even more now that I have a shower instead of a tub. One thing that's been an eyesore since I moved in though, is this tiny tiny chip off one of the tiles. It probably wouldn't bother me as much if it wasn't just across from the toilet. It's basically in my line of sight every single day and finally I just decided to fix it. A bit of leftover paint from other projects, paintbrushes and about 30 seconds later it was done. The grey colour isn't the perfect match, but in my world it's still better than red. Check! The fridge freezer that came with the apartment needed replacing before I moved in. It had sort of a built-in handle at the bottom of the door, and I couldn't find one I liked with the same feature in white. The fridge I ended up buying had the handles on the sides, and there ended up being a gap between the slot for the fridge and the fridge itself, if that makes sense. It looked a bit unfinished. I hadn't really planned on fixing it now, since I thought I'd need to do a bunch of measuring and go to get wood to fill the gap. Then I thought maybe I have something in my storage room that might help me figure out what I need, like a small scrap piece of something to use as a template. I saved this narrow oak picture ledge that I built ages ago. I already asked my son Bill if he wanted it, and since he didn't, my plan was to get rid of it. Lo and behold, would you believe if I said it was a perfect fit? All I had to do was move the two brackets a tiny bit and screw the whole thing in place. Magic! My initial thought was to paint it white, but now that it's up I like the wood there. It matches the floor and my cutting board, so I think I'll keep it. Almost everything in my apartment is well thought out by the architects who designed it. Everything except for the small walk-in closet. I don't personally need a lot of closet space, but when you walk in there, there's a pretty useless cabinet at the front. It houses the fuse box and access to the utilities for the apartment. Several of the other units have this cabinet in their entry hall, which makes much more sense. I keep my camera and filming gear in there, but if it hadn't been there, it would have been a much more functional space. I needed somewhere to hang a hanger and there wasn't really a good place for it, until I came up with attaching a hook to the actual doors of the utility cabinet. I didn't want to drill a hole if I could avoid it, so I tried using command strips on a hook that I already had, and it worked. It's so great to have somewhere to quickly hang an outfit in there. I hope you enjoyed this video, this type of content reminds me of my blogging days. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. 
please also consider subscribing. I'll continue to share all things Scandinavian from my apartment here in Stockholm and beyond. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.